Hello guys, in today's video I'm going to be doing a review of the Dali Opticon 6 speakers. Uh, they're speakers that I've owned for about three years now and I've been meaning to review them for quite a long time but I mean I've had these for a very long time so um, I feel that I've had more than enough time to test them. So let's begin. So the first thing I would like to talk about these speakers is the design and the unique features of the speaker. So basically I think that the speakers are well designed. They're quite simplistic in their design. Uh, I would say the only thing that makes them quite unique or the two things that would make them quite unique would be the drivers. They're made out of like a wood color, which is quite distinctive to Dali. And also the other thing would be the hybrid tweeter module as well, which is uh, quite unique. And uh, there's not many other brands that do that. And that's quite interesting. Another unique feature about the Dali Opticons is basically Dali, Dali has a patent called the SMC which is a soft magnetic compound and basically they put this compound on the interior components in the driver and the, the aim of it is to take away the color from the sound and to reduce distortion so they think that this uh, is a very very important part of, spe of their speaker design so with the Opticon range Basically, so taking this exactly from Dali's website, it says that the entire pole piece, which is surrounded by a large ferrite magnet, is constructed by the soft magnetic compound. That way the SMC material is used in the most important parts of the driver. So with the Opticon range, basically what they've, say, they've said here is they've taken this SMC compound and they've put it in the most important part of the driver where you're going to get the most difference. Okay, but the more up the ranges you go, they, the more of that SMC they use in the driver. So for example, the Rubicon range, which is the, the level up from the Opticon range, it's quite a lot more money, it's about double the price. So here it says the Rubicon speakers, on the other hand, have a pole piece which is constructed entirely from SMC and which is surrounded by a copper cap and enclosed within a large ferrite magnet. This maximizes the effect of the SMC while keeping the design of the magnet motor system fairly simple. And then above that you have the Epicon series, which I think is a probably I think it's four times the price of the Rubicons, actually. It's about it's about three or four times the price. I think the Epicon 6s, they're like eight grand or so. So eight times more than the Opticon and about three or four times the Rubicon, right? So in this flagship speaker, the Epicon, the SMC, the soft magnetic compound, is used in the pole piece as well as in the ring around the crown, crown slash cylinder head actually it is incorporated in all the parts where it will have an effect so that's Dali's patent SMC and it's meant to reduce distortion improve accuracy of the sound in the Opticon range that you do have it but not quite like in the Rubicon and Epicon range so moving on this section is about the build quality of the Dali Opticon 6s which I have I also have the Dali Epticon Center uh, speaker as well. And I'm going to do a separate review about this center speaker and also how the Dali Opticon does as a home theater package. This review is just about the Opticon 6s and basically how well they function as stereo speakers for music. Okay, so the build quality, back to build quality. MDF cabinets. So the reason they've chosen MDF 
is because it's an acoustically inert material, which is what you want for speakers. But does it make it special? No, there's lots of companies that do that. So moving on, I think with the build quality, it seems to me that there's not really many special finishes or special attention that has been made to the speaker's build. So for example, there is no veneering option. Okay, lots of people like their speakers to look high quality as well as sound high quality. So there's no veneer, it's like a vinyl wrap. Um, and there's no option of actual lacquering or like gloss finish, uh, which would be nice, but there is none of that also. Um, the only thing I've seen is the, uh, is like a satin vinyl finish. You can have it in white. I think you could have it in black as well. And it's kind of like a wood, a faux wood effect with a black front. So they're the options you have. And the other thing is with the build quality, like, I mean, at this sort of price range, They've got like uh, grills for the speakers. Not that I really use them much, but some people do like to use the grills, especially for movies. But with the grills, there's they're not magnetic. They're like the kind of cheapest style speaker where you have to line them up with the holes. And I just think like it'd just be nice if 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 they could include that, but they didn't, right? So uh, yeah, so. I put here, look, it keeps the cost down, right? Look, that does keep the cost down. And as long as the company have put the sole focus on the sound quality and and it's and that has made up for it, then I guess that would be okay. And uh, you know, I think with the ones I've got, they're the white versions, and uh, at the time I liked them, and I think now I'm kind of like I'm in two minds about it, okay, to be honest, because you know, I mean, I've had them for three plus years, so maybe it could be that, it could be that. But I mean, sometimes I look at that, look at it, and I think like you could compare it to like the cheap IKEA furniture that you get. You know, that's all I'll say to be honest with you. But to be honest, the quality leaves a bit to be desired. But I mean, just looking at the speaker, it looks nice. It's just when you kind of knock on knock on the wood and you kind of look around and that sort of stuff. Um, one positive is the quality of the of the drivers and and the um, the actual parts they've put in it and the binding posts at the back. They don't cheap out there. So where it's important, I think yeah, it's fine. So we're just gonna have a we're British, right? So we need the tea every now and again. Right, sound quality test. Right, sound quality. This is basically how I'm going to review the speaker. This is the most important part of the review, okay? But I'm just going to give you like some overview of how I'm going to do it. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the treble, the mid-range and the bass regions. That's where I'm going to start with the sound quality review. And then the sound stage and the imaging of the speaker as well. Then I'm going to go on to the placement and the sweet spots. Okay, and then another a new part of the reviews I've been doing is a, a lossless versus lossy comparison. Okay, will you hear a difference with these speakers if you use lossless music or lossy, like even 320 kilobits a second music, say from Spotify or something like that? And then finally, a conclusion, right? So let's begin. Actually, no, we're not going to begin. This here is the testing methodology, right? So this is kind of like how I've tried to make it a fair test as po as much as possible, given the fact that, you know, I'm not Bill Gates, I've not got unlimited resources and, uh, you know, I live in a house, you know, a living room, right? So number one, the only place I can test it is in my living room, okay? It's not acoustically the best place, but it's far from being the worst place. Um, I've got carpeted floor, I've got lots of furniture in there. There are some windows in there, um, but I would say it's far from being the worst listening environment. The second thing is, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, there's gonna be a mixture of lossless and lossy test tracks that I've used. Uh, the third thing is the amplification. So, I've used four different amplifiers with this uh, set of speakers before. So you've got a top line, 
Yamaha Avantage 3070, which is like their top receiver before you go on to, to separates. Okay, so that's the first thing I've used. I've used the Yamaha AS801, which is again one of Yamaha's higher end um, stereo amplifiers and the RRP of that is 800 pounds. And the previous one, the, the AV receiver was about 2,000 pounds, 1,500, 2,000 pounds. So they're not cheap. It's not, it's not the most expensive by far, but it's not crap basically. Another thing I've used with this is a Anthem receiver, which I had before. This was the MRX 710, which is kind of like an AV receiver with a very high focus on sound quality. And I've also used a Hypex Encore, these like new generation of Class D amplifiers. Okay, and they're kind of like audiophile performance at a lower price, right? So uh, I'm going to be making a review separately on that in the future. The speakers have been isolated as much as possible from the ground using a plinth and spikes. Okay, I haven't gone absolutely insane like some people do because they have the money and all that sort of stuff. It's kind of just like plinth and spikes, okay? enough uh, isolation I would say and the final thing is decent quality speaker wire has been used again it's not the best of the best It's nowhere near the worst it's somewhere in between it's the Van Dam if anyone has seen the Van Dam speaker cables okay so that's how I uh, have tested these these are the, this is the equipment I've used so first things first the treble so I've just written all this down prior to this review so I'll try to sum it up right the treble frequencies they're amazing okay for my ears I absolutely love them they're beautiful detailed they're wide dispersion as well which is brilliant uh, the brightness is there they're not like warm like dark sounding speakers no their brightness is there uh, the, the treble is silky smooth at the same time it's never harsh never harsh um, it has very strong presence and brilliance, which is good, but it's still like quite relaxed, more relaxed than something like a BMW 603, which is always kind of amped up and like on cocaine sort of thing. You know, it's not that sort of speaker. It's just relaxed, but it has the detail and it has, it has energy still, it's lovely. Um, the Dali Hybrid Tweeter, as I men mentioned earlier, is what makes this speaker different to other speakers I've heard. Um, you have the Silk Dome tweeter partnered with the uh, with the ribbon and the ribbon takes over at a circuit, certain frequency range. I forgot exactly what range, uh, what, what, what range it was, but it's very high up. It just takes over the kind of the final parts of the treble frequencies. OK, but I feel like this tweeter is probably responsible for like the reason why I love it so much because it's one of the only things that is different between this and other speakers I've tested is that tweeter unit, right? By no means it's the most detailed tweeter in the whole world. It's detailed enough, 100% detailed enough, but you know, it's just so, it's just for me, it's relaxing. It gets your foot tapping. It just makes you just kind of, it sucks you into the, into the environment, to, into the music, sorry. So that's what I'll say about the treble. Some really good things there. Next range, uh, next one, sorry, it's the mid-range, mid-range. So again, mid-range is like where most of the music is, right? And uh, yeah, so we have lower mids, we have mid-mids and we have upper mids, right? The upper mids are like, you know, in music, in like classical music, we'd call that the treble really, because it would be like the soprano voice and stuff like that. Uh, and the, like the violin and like tr basically the treble frequencies in music or on a piano but as far as a driver is concerned it's 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 part of the mid woofer or the mid um mid driver right so you've got the upper mids i've put here and i agree like they're lovely again they follow very nicely the crossover between the mids and the treble it's just really well integrated um, the mid mids okay so this is like uh, instrument like 
the uh, like I said earlier, like you've got like your string instruments and stuff like that. Um, very rich, very focused sound. Um, and the lower mids would be like the the human voice, like the the male voice. Kind of it sounds like bassy, but to a to to a mid range driver again, it's like on the lower end of that. I feel like the lower mids are probably the weakest part out of the entire mid range. Um, yeah, I, I, the reason I say that is because I feel sometimes that it loses a bit of focus, kind of sharpness. And uh, if you're not sitting in the right place or if your amplification is not up to scratch, it can sound a bit on the darker side. So uh, yeah, having said that, like I said before, I've tested this on many different amplifiers. And I found that when I switched to something like the Anthem, the Anthem MRX 710, the lower mids improved, right? But the problem with it was that the rest of the frequencies wasn't to my liking. So that's the problem, you know, with the amplifier. Some things may improve and some things you like, like from the other, amp other amplifier. And it's very hard to get it to match perfectly how you want without equalization. Right, so the bass. Yeah, so again, we have mids and upper bass. Uh, I would say it follows very closely, um, like with the with the lower mids. Again, you can't really it kind of all matches very well. It's not a very shy speaker. It's a very bold speaker. It's it's not um, basically. It's definitely not on the anemic side of bass. It's more on the other side. Happy to provide bass where it's needed. Um, I would say it's slightly relaxed sounding, as in terms of the the timing, rhythm and timing and all that sort of stuff. Slightly, not too much though, not 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 like to the point where you're unhappy. So it can actually be a good thing sometimes, um, like especially if you're trying to relax when you're trying to listen to music, like with reggae music, it's like excellent, like that sort of sound. Um, the mid bass overall, it's slightly exaggerated, but that could be my room as well. Okay, it could be the room. It's hard, you know, there definitely is a mid bass hump somewhere in, in the room. So, you know, like I said, normal conditions, okay? The sub bass, it's there. The, these speakers can play some of the sub bass, like the below 60 Hertz bass. It's not overblown. You know, I've heard some speakers where they've tried to say they've got really great extension, but sometimes the sub, some sub bass frequencies are a bit over the top and all you hear is the sub bass, like someone's turned a subwoofer on or something. But these speakers don't do that. They're there when you, when you need them, they play them and that's a great thing. Obviously keep your expectations in check. It's not going to be like a subwoofer. Okay. It's not going to be like put on THX movie or something like that but it's gonna be decent for most cases. I'd also say that the bass, it's not the most articulate and it's not the most textured, right? So the resolution in the bass isn't the, the, the most like that you could possibly have. Um, I've heard speakers in the price range that have a better textured bass, okay? So it all depends on what you're looking for. Next, T. Tea, need the tea. Next, sound stage and the imaging. And I have to say, magnificent. It's absolutely magnificent. The sound stage, I think, is probably one of the best you're gonna get in the price range for the floor standards, okay? Everything is just large and tall, you know? Uh, even for a floor stander, you close your eyes and you could you could believe, I'm telling you, you could believe that there is a band in front of you. As long as you put the speakers in the right position and you don't lose too much of the center stage, you could close your eyes and you could believe that there is actually a band there. It's quite, it's quite crazy, okay? Uh, and it's not hype, you know, I'm not paid to do these reviews. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just saying what I'm what what I think. Um, yeah, the stereo image is also very good, but it's it, it does lose a, a little bit of focus. Like you can still pick out where the instruments are coming from, but 
it's not like a studio monitor where you can like exactly identify that that's there, that's there. It's, it's not quite like that, but it's approaching that very close to that. And to be honest with you, I think, I think the reason for that is because the way Dali recommend and they've tuned the speakers that they, they expect you to put it perpendicular to the wall so you don't get basically no towing at all. So with other speakers, they recommend that you tow the speakers in. So they're pointing at your ears, right? With these speakers, they don't do that. They say it has to be 90 degrees. And I think because of that, you, you lose some of the focus, right? But what you gain is a wider, bigger sound, like a bigger sound stage. And for me, like for, for, for your general listening, right, and enjoyment, I prefer that because, it, like I said earlier, like these speakers, I can close my eyes with certain acoustic material and I could swear that there's a band there. Like, and I've, lo I've heard lots of speakers and they all kind of do it, but nothing like this one. Okay, so that's that. The next one is the placement. Placement, speaker placement and the uh, and the sweet spots. So are they fussy in mid-sized rooms? Because that's where I've tested it, in a mid-sized room. In a mid-sized room, just to clarify, is a room that's between 1,500, 1500 cubic feet and 3,000 cubic feet. That's the, the general definition of it in hi-fi world right so my room is just on the kind of mid it's a it's a mid-sized room just on the cusp of going into a small size room in that sort of room you really need these away from the walls like definitely these speakers 100 percent because the bass it can like i said earlier they can sound very exaggerated and when you get to that point it, it can take away the detail from the music. So you do need them a bit away from the walls. Um, yeah, so like at least at least 50 centimeters. I would even go as far to say as a meter away from the walls with these. Also, like I said earlier, they have to be placed perpendicular to the wall, okay? It aids the sound stage, right? But if you tow it in, you, the treble is extremely harsh okay so that's that's another one of the downside i'll get get to later right if you sit in any other position other than right in front of the like literally right here's the here's the speaker like right there in front of it if you're sitting there your ears are going to bleed like seriously it's very bright at that location i think they've they've tuned it for the purpose that you're going to be sitting there right so yeah, uh, they, by the way, Dali called that the wide dispersion principle, I think. It's their basic wide dispersion uh, is what they're going for there. Right, next section, lossless versus lossy music. When I say lossy music, I never go below 320 kilobits anyway. But the question is, will you hear a difference with these speakers? And the answer is, Yes, you will definitely hear a difference if you know what it is you're looking for. I've heard many people say that there's no difference between lossless and lossy under blind test conditions and this and that. But I've actually done some of those tests and I seem to always pick the lossless one. And I think it's because I know what it is I'm looking for. Right. So things like dynamic range is something that you need to listen for. And um, also with the bass, like there's one track that I can literally, I'm I'm sure like I could get it nine times out of ten. It's the um, the track from Batman. It's a it's a it's a song. It's a piece of music by Hans Zimmer. He's like an excellent movie composer. Okay, um, for movie scores. And the 320 kilobits version of that, when compare it to something like Tidal, it's like night and day right the base regions they're just like they're just all over the place whereas where with the lossless version 
there's just kind of like you you can kind of hear that someone has timed that bass when they've produced it in the studio right they've taken the time to to time it like very precisely so uh, listen to that track and you'll see what I mean this bass region comes um, I think it's around the 3 minute 20 mark, 3 minute 20, 3 minute 30, something like that. You're going to hear some, a huge crescendo and then a, like a real like strong sub bass. Okay, that, that track always kind of shows it to me. Right, so the conclusion is, conclusion, one more T, one minute. Right, conclusion. The price of these speakers is a thousand pounds to one thousand two hundred pounds. That's the price range. So in that price range, as I said before, the treble is the best quality about this speaker. All right, it really is a musician speaker. This is okay. It's very natural sounding, and it doesn't lack energy. It's got energy, um, and it's not. It's not one of these like analytical speakers where it just kind of like tries to dissect every part of the music and just uh, you know just it just gives it to you like that it's just very very nice easy going speaker that for people who appreciate a bit of high fidelity as well so there you go some competitors in the range you have i'm just going to give you three there's loads obviously right but three i've identified Wharfdale Evo 4.4 if you notice this is a new range by Wharfdale have a look at the tweeters have a look have a look at the design they've gone for this kind of I think they have a tweeter and and from the from memory I think it's a tweeter and a a um sorry silk dome tweeter and a a ribbon sorry I just had a, a brain freeze there um I think it's that either that or they've gone for a mid driver I've forgotten but I'll, I'll put it on the screen to clarify but this speaker similar principles to the Dali the Wharfdale sound is generally on the warmer end um, you know in recent times they've actually brightened them up a little bit so that's a competitor with this one for the same price uh, generally they do a great job I think that speaker is a has a like a downward firing bass port to make it easier with placement as well. So that's quite good. Um, I think I'm right there. The next one is the BMW 603. So BMW, very prestigious, very famous brand. Not my favourite brand in all honesty. But the good thing about BMW is um, you're going to be able to sell them for a very good price, even 10 years down the line. The same can't really be said with other speaker brands. So that's one thing I really like about pay. And sometimes it's good to pay for the known brands because, you know, you might like them enough. Basically, the BMWs will offer a brighter sound, uh, definitely, definitely colored, not neutral. Definitely a bright sound from the BMWs. And the next one you have is the Kef Q750 in the price range with the Dali's and i've actually never heard these speakers um i've heard the other two in the shops before but i've never actually heard the uh the, the kef q750 but i have heard the r7s right which is the higher range from that but to quote someone from online i did have a quick look this guy hans vetzel from soundstage hi-fi reckons it's one of the most neutral transducers i've ever heard in quotes so, and that would, I mean, to be honest with you, that, that, that's Kef in general. They're always trying to go for the neutral, 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 never add anything, never, never take anything away, which uh, can be a good thing. Okay. So I would agree that the sound. Sorry about that. My camera reached its maximum recording capacity. Honestly, I, I really don't know much about cameras. So I need someone to help me with cameras because like I'm just getting started and just everything is is too much. Batteries need charging, this, that, this, that. It's, it's just, anyway, where was I? Um, the Dali's, 
they are definitely slightly colored, right? They're definitely slightly colored speakers, right? And that means that you could consider them a little bit musical. But, you know, I would say, I would say that when you have a neutral speaker, people always chasing this thing about neutral, 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 right? I would say that is that it's important for a, for a speaker to be neutral, but from experience, a neutral speaker, like with a perfectly flat sound, it doesn't always give you what you want, okay? And, and what I'm saying, and the reason I'm saying that is because we all live in a home, right? In a home living environment, these speakers are probably going to be put in your in your living room. And people forget that the living room, the, the environment that you, you live in, it colours the sound. So you could take a flat speaker, you could put it in your living room, and it's no longer going to make a flat sound. So that's why it's really important to, to not just buy things based on like a frequency graph that you've seen that's been tested under optimal, uh, optimal conditions. It's important that you actually demo these speakers at home, in your home. Never listen to a hi-fi dealer and say you can listen to it in my demo room. I absolutely hate that. It's 2020 and I think we need to move on from that. You need to have more home demos now because how are you ever gonna be happy with those speakers until you know how your room is an instrument, how your room is going to be affecting the sound, you know? So, like I said, the Dalis, I think they probably are coloring the sound to an extent. It's not so far away from neutral though, but in my room, they sound better than the Kef. I mean, I've had Kef R7s, right? I've tested Kef R7s before and my Dalis sounded better than those R7s in, in a few areas. Not in every area, but in a few areas. And overall, I prefer the Dalis because for me, they're more musical. They're more relaxing and enjoyable to listen to, right? But that's not to say that, like I said earlier, a neutral speaker, if you took a neutral speaker and you put it in an anechoic chamber, which is a room which doesn't have any sound reflections, then a neutral speaker is probably going to be what you're looking for. Okay, so uh, let's get that clear. If you have an anechoic chamber, if your living room is an 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 if your living room is an anechoic chamber, then maybe you shouldn't buy the Dalis. So yeah, to finally, for absolutely like finally conclude this, I think it's one of the best speakers that you're going to hear in the price range. And I think when you start spending money beyond that, pr that price range, the performance to price ratio is gonna go down, right? So your performance is gonna obviously improve, but the price is gonna improve by so much more. So that ratio is gonna go down, right? So the upgrades that you do get when you spend more, typically it's in the actual build quality of the speaker the design of the speaker and the finishing. So yeah, I would say if, if sound quality is the most important thing to you, go for something like this. This is, I would say these speakers are, are good, thousand-ish pounds. And if you want to get the maximum sound quality out of them, you'd be better upgrading your listening environment rather than paying an extra thousand or two thousand pound or eight thousand pounds for better speakers because for 500 i mean even if you if you spent a few hundred pounds to upgrade your listening environment you're going to get a huge difference like you won't even recognize they're the same speakers in a lot of cases okay now this review my reviews they always go on like for ages and i don't know why <laughs> So hopefully people are listening through to the end, right? But I'm gonna do another review about these Dalis and that is gonna be on how they perform with movies rather than how they perform with music. And personally, I think there is a difference. It's not just the speaker, you need to test actual tracks, right? Music and movie tracks. And with movies, I feel a little bit differently 
about this speaker. So if you wanna, if you want to know, then please go to my next video or click subscribe and basically be kept up to date anytime I uh, make new videos about this product. I hope you enjoyed the video today and yeah, see you next time.